everybody. Hi, sorry about the few minutes late here. Uh, I wanted to do live today on my computer because I have a few things I wanted to show you, uh, but um, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Hi, Diane. So I couldn't figure it out because um, they changed some settings and then you have to be on Chrome and I'm not on Chrome. Hey, Yvonne. Hey, Diane. Okay, so I had a couple of questions sent in and I thought that I would start with that. Um, some good questions and um, I, to, <laughs> thank you. Um, so today is a really, really, really cool day because, well, I'm in Sarasota. I'm in our RV, as you can see, and it's an absolutely gorgeous day. And after we're done here, I'm actually going to go out to the park with my mom get her out she's 86 and then we're gonna take a nice walk so I um, thought uh, we got boy lots of people coming on quickly so but there was a great question that I got actually two pretty cool questions that I got that I could start with and then uh, wait for your questions and see if there's anything that you have hey Susie all right, so the question that I got that I thought was really, really good because, um, well, you know, there's so much confusion about it, and I see things being written all the time trying to help people um, uh, uh, with this question, and I never quite get the article that I'm, I'm, I know really tells people what they need to know. And that's about magnesium, right? I mean, are you wondering about magnesium? Give me a thumbs up or something to let me know because magnesium confuses people all the time. I see so many questions wanting to know, what's the best magnesium to take? There's so many of them out there, I mean, Gosh, magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, magnesium citrate, gluconate, chloride, sulfate, malate, threonate, on and on, right? I mean, come on, which one do I take? Which one should you take? So, and then there's so much confusion about the absorption of these different magnesiums and, um, and how much we should be taking. And the reason there is um, confusion about it is because the amount that you see on your bottle is very different than the amount you're actually absorbing. Now, the way it's determined is based on elemental magnesium. I'm trying to, woo, backwards. There we go. Elemental magnesium. And elemental magnesium is different than the magnesium that you're seeing on your bottle. So, for instance, we're supposed to get, on average, about 350 milligrams of elemental magnesium a day. So, when you look at your bottle, let's say you go to have magnesium citrate, they might say 300 milligrams. You think, oh, I'm getting plenty of magnesium but magnesium citrate only has 16% of el elemental magnesium. So I'm gonna give you a couple of percentages, kind of give you what that means and show you, I actually took out my little supply of magnesium. And the reason this is so important is because we know that 75%, this is not functional medicine. This is the United States Department of Agriculture has informed us that about 75% of all of us, not me, because I'll show you what I do, are deficient in magnesium. Now, this is really, really, really important because magnesium and calcium are critical to work together and potassium, but magnesium and calcium are critical for our bone mass. And so as we women and also men. Um, men can lose bone uh, as well, but it's so important to get adequate magnesium. It used to be thought that you need twice as much calcium as magnesium, but that is just simply not true anymore. It should be at least one to one. And you know, 
a lot of times, it's a lot easier to get calcium from your diet than it is to get magnesium if you eat any, you know, cheese, dairy, or even a milk substitute. If you've looked at those milk substitutes like almond milks, um, cashew milk, coconut milk, they're all fortified with calcium. They're not fortified with magnesium though, but they're fortified with calcium. And usually they're fortified quite a bit with calcium. You know, like 450 milligrams per cup. Well, that's 45% of the RDA of calcium. That's a lot of calcium in one cup. And if you're like me and you drink, uh, say, a protein shake, you're and you're drinking more than a cup, you want more than a cup, that's a lot of calcium. And we know in terms of calcium, we really shouldn't be drinking more than, or, or taking in, consuming more than five to 600 milligrams of calcium at any one sitting. And <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, that's true. Total research, straight conventional stuff here, guys. And the reason is, is because our body doesn't know what to do with more than 500 and 600 milligrams at any one sitting. So what does it do? It deposits it in our vessels, right? So we don't want that. We don't want calcium deposits in our vessels. It may deposit calcium in our joints. We don't want that either. So five to 600 milligrams of calcium in any one sitting. Now, magnesium, when they say one to one, they're talking about, it's very, very difficult uh, to actually clarify what this is. So let me tell you a little bit about the different magnesiums. So magnesium oxide is probably the most common. Hey, Joanne, first time watcher from Canada. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, magnesium oxide is the, uh, is the magnesium uh, that is most commonly used if your doctor prescribes you magnesium. Magnesium oxide, I never use magnesium oxide except under one circumstance. <laughs> I use it in, Jer hi David, there's my honey. He's going to get something. <laughs> Magnesium, I've only used it in my elderly population, my elderly patients who are also anemic and preferably constipated because magnesium oxide, and the reason conventional doctors use that is they don't really even understand this themselves. Now, magnesium oxide has the greatest amount of elemental uh, magnesium. 61% of magnesium oxide is elemental magnesium. So they, the problem though with magnesium oxide is it's not well absorbed. So it stays in the gut and then you get very loose stools. So you're just pooping out more magnesium. So it, it, I have used, unless you use magnesium IV, high doses of magnesium oxide is a waste of time unless you want them to poop. So I like constipated and anemic. And why anemic? Because magnesium oxide is the form of magnesium that is actually absorbed by red blood cells better than any other magnesium. So I use it in my geriatric population. Now there's magnesium hydroxide, which is also very high in elemental uh, magnesium, which is um, uh, the type of magnesium in milk of magnesia. So, you know, M-O-M, -M, mom, and milk of magnesia makes you poop, right? So that gives you a clue. Even though it's 42% elemental magnesium, it's not well absorbed. And so it helps soften stools and out it goes. My favorite magnesium is, I, I actually have three favorite magnesiums. Uh, magnesium gluconate, magnesium threonate, magnesium, more than that, magnesium malate, and magnesium citrate. So I use them in different reasons, different ways. So the magnesium, let me start with when you see a magnesium chelate, woo -doo -doo, there we go. I make little notes to myself on my containers. So magnesium chelate basically means that it's chelated to an amino acid. This is magnesium glycinate, and it has a 14% amount of elemental magnesium. So I know that when I take a teaspoon of this, I'm getting 42 milligrams of elemental magnesium. 
That's pretty good. I like that. Then I use a magnesium malate and the re oh, but let me tell you, magnesium chelated, chelated magnesium is low, uh, very high absorption uh, and low, con uh, low uh, laxative effect, low laxative effect. So this is good to absorb into your bloodstream so you can get it into your cells. Speaking of that, I think it's important for you to also know that, you know, it's the fourth most abundant mineral in our body, but it's distributed half in the bone and half in the tissues, like muscle and soft tissues. Less than 1% of our magnesium is in our blood. So testing it from venous blood is very difficult. If your levels are low in your venous blood, you're really low. Okay, that means it's already taken magnesium out of your tissues. So if you see a low magnesium in your bloodstream, you're gonna need to really supplement for a long, long time. Everybody should supplement, to be honest with you, unless you're in that 25%, you're, you're, that's hard to tell. Okay, so the second one I wanted to tell you about that's also high, high um, uh, that I use is magnesium malate, and it's also low uh, in um, uh, laxative effect and high bioavailability, but it has a very low amount of 6.5% 6, 6 of um, ma elemental magnesium, but I like it. I, I still like it, and I go because sometimes I don't get my shake in. I always put this in my shake. So if I'm having a shake, which is most of the time, I'll use a powder because I can mix them all up and not take a whole bunch of pills. But if I don't take my shake, well, then I want to make sure that I still get my magnesium. Now, a little bit of irregularity or I need a boost of magnesium for whatever reason, I do love magnesium citrate. I know you're like, oh God, this girl's got so many magnesiums. They last a long time because I have so many, but I do like it. Magnesium citrate, <clears throat> excuse me, has a 16% elemental magnesium and it's cheaper and it's got 48, so for this one, 48 milligrams of elemental magnesium per 300 uh, milligrams. So if you see 300 milligrams, then you it's 16%, so you have to times 0.16 into 300, and that's gonna give you your 48 milligrams. And this is 60 servings, so I like that. And plus it's a powder, so I put it also. It has a little bit of a laxative effect though. So the citrate, you know, like if you don't eat very well or you get a little bit backed up or whatever, don't go for the milk of mag oxide because that really is not good for our bones. That can increase osteoporosis. Go for the citrate. Okay. All right. Now, I do take one other magnesium. I'm like, oh, this girl is crazy. She's not. I'm not. I just know my stuff. Okay. I take Neuromag. Um, I take magnesium threonate. So magnesium threonate has been shown that it, theirs is called Neuromag. This is Designs for Health and it's called Neuromag, but it's magnesium threonate. And magnesium threonate specifically, specifically um, um, is taken up, crosses the blood brain barrier and is taken up by brain cells. So magnesium threonate is really important for our brain. So I actually take that every day. I got to use my brain and I got to use it for a long time, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so the cool thing about magnesium is that we do know that it's decreasing in our soil. So we do know, so we get it mostly from nuts and leafy green vegetables, some whole grains, um, but we also have wonderful controlled studies on it. It's good for um, uh, diabetes and asthma and heart irregularities. We use it by IV for atrial fibrillation and something called torsades de point, which is a uh, before dying, <laughs> uh, uh, heart irregularity. Um, we use it for metabolic syndrome. It actually helps cells take up uh, sugar better. We use it for painful periods. We use it for leg cramps and heartburn and constipation, like I said. And um, it's, it's, it also has been linked to decreased, if you take it, it's been, and have good levels of magnesium, it's been, de it's been um, linked with 
decreased risk of heart attack and heart failure. So take your magnesium. Oh, and bones. It's so important for bones. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So let's, um, yay. Great. Leanne, she says, take, she takes the, she takes the same ones I take. Malate three and eight and glycinate. Great. Okay. So how about a question? Um, I was going to answer another question, but I see some came in. So let me see if I can, Ooh, Tammy from North Dakota. That's awesome. Hey, Kali. 